So, welcome back to round four coverage of tonight's Friday Night Magic tournament from Lost Legion Games and Comics in South Charleston, West Virginia. Yes, I almost did say Star City Games for some reason. I have no idea. But uh, round four of five rounds of Swiss, followed by a top eight. Still have 36 players in the tournament tonight. Lots of good magic to be had. We've got, uh, looks like, two pairings on nine points, so they will be able to double draw into the top eight. Uh, but this matchup is featuring the fifth player on nine points and the pair down. So we've got Zach Villianco playing green-white tokens. And he is paired up against Michael Taylor, who's playing Gruel Aggro. He's basically playing Mono Red uh, with Gore Clan Rampagers. Do you know... As I'm now joined by Dave Snow. Uh, do you know anything about Michael's deck? Do you know if he's playing... I think he's kind of playing the standard Blue White Red Flash deck. Michael Taylor? Yeah. No, he is playing Gruel Aggro. Oh, okay. I'm just curious if there's more than Gore Clan Rampagers in it. Or if it's like the full-on, like... Rancor, Burning Tree, Flint Hoof kind of thing. I don't know. Oh, I have no idea. We'll find out together. Uh, and then, Zach, if you've never watched our stream before, uh, first of all, you're making clearly making a mistake, but uh, Zach Villianco is known uh, for one thing, and that is playing uh, playing his own deck every time and always trying to do something hilarious. But I think this week he actually has like what I would call a real deck. I think he's playing... Not, not that Green White Tokens is necessarily tearing up the competitive uh, events, but... Uh, Last time he was in here trying to win with Laboratory Maniac. Huh. I will warn you, Dave, that this is slightly delayed. Alright. So, turn one, Unleash Cackler, followed up by... Well, there we go. Rootbound Crag into uh, Flinthoof Boar answers the question we had previously posed, which is, is he playing more than just Gore Clan Rampagers? A little bit more. Kind of looks like the Saito deck. Yeah, I think it also plays Burning Tree Emissaries as well. But they don't play Rancor, which I think is neat, or interesting. So Intangible Virtue... Uh, pumping up his uh, Midnight Haunting tokens. Actually, like this is, this would be a very interesting race here, because the uh, the Vigilance on Intangible Virtue is such like an under... Everybody thinks of it as the pump effect, the Anthem, but... The Vigilance just lets you get an incremental damage, and, and God forbid you ever stack two of them, and then they basically, like, you can't profitably attack it into them. It's like even Mike's attacks now are bad. Yeah. Get in for three and trade half a card for a card. Mm-hmm. And you know, you know Zach's, like, entire deck is just full up of three more hauntings and four more lingering souls. Mm -hmm. Zach just taking it all here. Uh, Post-combat burning tree emissary. Followed by a cackler. Were you playing in Ravnica block? Uh, a touch. I've, I've, a I have mispronounced burning tree emissary about a thousand. It is emiss This one's emissary, right? Or is this one shaman? That's the emissary. Shaman's a 3-4. Okay, I keep saying shaman all the time. <laughs> So Zach, three cards in hand, two uh, Midnight Haunting Tokens, and an Absence Pilgrim. Staring down at a whole menagerie of creatures on the other side. Looks like two Cacklers, an Emissary, and a Flint of Boar. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's playing Junk Tokens, I guess. Yeah, there is an Overgrown Tomb there for the flashback one, Lingering Souls, I imagine. Yeah, maybe some Soren. Maybe. Chat getting on to me for my mislabeling of decks. So just piling in for two. Uh, this is likely uh, most usually in a spot he's going to be representing another midnight haunting, right? You just pass. Yeah. Yeah. Like every card in this deck should be able to be cast for four mana, I would think. I, could, I couldn't imagine any removal spell being better than an actual spell here. Yeah, there's the midnight haunting. Yeah, that's predicted. Former power guys come on board. So, what do you block here? Everything. <laughs> you just trade your whole board, yeah. Well, I mean, you're you're at 13 life. You're well well ahead of the burn range. Michael's down to no. He's gonna still get a grip. Four. Four cards in hand. So you trade with everything except the board. Or is the is the board a two-two base or a two-one base? 
He was a 3-3 three, three right now. He's a 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, he's a 2-2 two, two starting out. Oh, he's a 2-2 two, two now because he doesn't have a forest. No, it gets big off of mountains. Oh, I'm, st I'm the worst. I'm literally the worst. It's clearly a green card. <laughs> like, what green card would say it gets plus one, plus one if you have forest? Yeah, forest. <laughs> That'd be a pretty good mechanic, wouldn't it? I think, uh, basically, what's going to happen is Wizards is going to see this, and then they're going to be like, that's some pretty ground racing design work, Good. and then call me up. you going to make basics worse. <laughs> <laughs> got to make basics worse. So Zach's still thinking about his blocks here. So you trade with everything that isn't the Flint Hoof Boar. Or you could trade your Absence Pilgrim and your token for his entire board. Is there any... Well, I guess you could possibly get... And not really blown out, but Michael could spear something in response or something. Save his... Save his boar. That only, yeah, that only makes a bad trade on the boar. I mean, I could see letting the boar through. And I then, would probably not block the boar. And then crushing all the tutus. But I don't, I don't think at this point Absence Pilgrim is any kind of important. I guess he does have Gavany Township. Uh-huh. Another land to activate yeah. without it, but it's a tough one. You now Zach is a legal professional. He just like to think things through from all angles. <laughs> we could be here until late until the, we could we could go to time in this round just with him <laughs> thinking about these blocks. Yeah, I'm really surprised. Well, not surprised. It looked like a very good card when it was spoiled, but. Um, I guess I'm just kind of happily surprised with how efficient Gore Clan Rampager is. Oh, yeah, he's uh, yeah, I mean, he, well, he's clearly good. Like, even even just as a creature, he's fine. You know what I mean? 4-4 four, for four, 4 Trample. But, uh, like, he's, like, like the only Blood Rush creature that's... Good enough. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> One thing is interesting, too, is I was watching coverage of the Pro Tour, and they did a, a draft tech with... Um, No Did he just, he just let it go? He just let it go. That's ballsy. Um, yeah, he's playing Moon Silver Spear. That's hilarious. I don't know what that does. Uh, well, it's a promo <laughs> because it was the giveaway at uh, Avacyn Restored. It's a four mana artifact, and it's uh, four to equip. It makes angels. It makes a four four angel. It's a card, I guess. It's Zach Vilyanka, <laughs> man. <laughs> Like, out of, like, anybody else, you'd be like, why is he playing that card? Out of Zach, you're like, yeah, that's fine. At least that's, like, a card that, like, is good and limited. Like, a lot of times Zach plays cards that aren't even good and limited. That card was good and absolutely limited. <laughs> yeah, well, because it makes an angel, like, it makes a creature to equip it, too, so it's, like, it's very ra rarely dead. Uh, Let me bring uh, it up. I'll probably I had it in my sealed pool. It was, it was pretty good. Probably drafted Addison Restored like five times, and it was just miserable. It was the worst. All the pros said it was the worst format. What did, what did it call? What was that thing called? Moon Silver Spear. Yeah. Let's bring that hot business up. Oh, I guess we got Burst Strike too. Awesome. Oh you no, know, it's when it attacks you get the four four. It makes a token, Dave. I guess, I guess it makes a token. <laughs> no one is arguing the value of that card. It's Zach Vilyanko. The last deck Zach played when he was here for over Christmas was a... Uh, it was a Primal Surge deck. Nice, like we, a Primal Surge deck. No, it was like, if you resolve tri Primal Surge, you win the game. It was like a harder combo. No other... No other uh, non-permanent in the deck. And basically it won through a variety of things. It, could win, it won with Lord of Nothingness or Laboratory Maniac. But it was just, like, we actually, I actually worked on it a lot because I was like, it was very fun, but like, we're just trying to make it like, good enough. We were trying to, we were trying to go 3-2 in FNM. Yeah. I think we did alright. Of course, every time we had him under camera, just like, just get, just beaten to pieces. And every time that he was off camera, just like, amazing, like, fun <laughs> thing to watch. You're like, wait guys, wait. Cover me now. Yeah, we need to. We have a lot more comboing on table 14 <laughs> than on table 2. We're giving away lots of goodies tonight. I've uh, been a winner. What else going out? Uh, to in store, we've given out Master Biomancer, Hell Rider, and something else I can't remember. Oh, Green Sun Zenith. And. 
to the stream so far, it's been Counterbalance, Mox Opal, and something else I can't remember. All of them have been cool. Oh, no, an Aurelia the War Leader. She's my girl. You like it. Did yeah. you play two of them in your day? Yeah. She's very hard to deal with. She passes the Searing Spear test. Yeah. She's... I mean, I've been, I've been playing a ton of Flash, like, ever since the Pro Tour. Uh-huh. And Boris Reckoner is just not good anymore. I don't think... People have made a game around it. I don't really think, like, it's obviously a good card, and I'm not going to say it's not a... Uh, I mean, I'm not arguing with the facts of it. But, like, it's... it's it's only really good against like a, a metagame completely unpaired to deal with it. Like a, like a deck that's trying to attack into it. Yeah. But like, there's so many decks now that could really care less about it. And, and like you say, you just you just build your deck to, to deal with it, and then that deck becomes a lot worse. Yeah, that's, that's kind of how it was at the Pro Tour. It was like, the, the Joe Larson version is super aggressive with the Boris Charms and the Searing Spears uh -huh. and the Blasphemous Axe. And so it's kind of like, oh, I'll just, I'll just blow you out for 16 out of nowhere. Yeah. And then, it was all in on the Reckoner plan. Mm -hmm. But, like, if everyone is metagaming against, like, and mainboarding against your your yeah. plan A, like, you have to get a plan. Are you playing Geist then? No. You're just playing Angels? Uh -huh. Angels, Snapcasters, two Aurelias, and I see your... How many Haunts are you playing? One. Just one? Yeah. Did a lot of work for you in that game? Yeah, it's good. I mean, I, I did, that card was always good. I mean, used to play it in Blue-White Delver. I mean, it's not like it got worse, but... Yeah, I've been, I've been playing a bunch of Flash, and, like, you just ran into the Reckoner problem, and the, the way the meta game kind of switched was, like, the Flash decks from the Pro Tour were just two in the middle. It was kind of like it wasn't aggressive enough to beat the control decks, and then it was... Uh, it wasn't really, like, controlling enough to have good matchups against the aggro decks. Mm -hmm. and so I've been... Working with it a bit. We we went to uh, right after the pro tour, or no, the weekend of the pro tour. So like all the information had been out. You know what I mean? Like the the players in the know showed up with the, like you know Melissa Dottoro's band list and all those kind of JT's like uh, American Flash list. But like uh, we went to the tournament and the Jonathan Wright, he'd been playing American Flash like the whole time since rotation, but he was still playing Geist instead of Boris Reckoners. Uh -huh. And so, like, everybody was prepared for, like, these Boris Reckoner games and just could not beat a Geist. <laughs> and he finished, like, 24th out of, like, 700 people. Nice. Yeah, but, I mean, like, he, like, it was just, like, clearly the right call, which is just, like, Reckoner is awesome for that tournament where nobody was, like, or, like, at least, like, the unprepared are not prepared yeah. for it. But, like, if, like I said, like, it, like Boris Reckoner is actually not, not that great as long as, like, the worst thing you... Like, there's not many decks that are like, I can't beat six damage. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, Searing Spear, okay, you take you take your three or whatever, or but, uh, like, you tack into it, okay, you two for one me with my dudes. Yeah. But, like, that's, like, literally the worst case scenario. Yeah, I mean, it's it's super good against, you know, like, the Saito Red Green, and against, yes. like, the Night Humans. It's the and, best like, the wall. Effect. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, the the best best wall. it's the best wall. Best <laughs> wall. But, uh... But yeah, it's not really, it's not that great in these, um... I had another friend who was playing the Reckoner version of Flash, and he just got crushed. Also because he wasn't playing, the one that plays Geist gets to play a little bit more, because you're not playing, like, the kind of cutesy combo cards, like, you're not playing action, you're not playing Harvest Fire. Right. Like, you get room for actual counter spells, and, like, he would just get, like, he got paired up against, like, two or three rounds, got paired up against, like, controllish decks, mm -hmm. and, like, you just can't beat a Drown Yard. Like, well, you can, but, I mean, like, it's tough. It's tough. It, it was easy right after the Pro Tour, because everybody wasn't wise to get an Harvest Pirate for 30. Mm -hmm. But as soon as they figured it out, it, it was not the best. Or, or getting Psychic Spirals. Like, basically, you're just all, like, you side in your one Psychic Spiral and hope that when, like, it hits the graveyard, like, you have enough mana to fight over the Snapcaster. Yeah. It's like, the whole game just devolves into, like, do, have I hit enough land drops and sculpted the perfect hand so that when I have 50 cards in my grave or you know 40 cards in my <laughs> graveyard I can that's basically what it amounted to it was like you'd, you'd try to get in a spot to where it's like alright I'm going to Boris Charm you on your turn and then Snapcaster it back yeah. and then attack for like 4 more so yeah. each for 12 otherwise you're just sitting there waiting until you have a card left in your deck so you just kind of try to get the hand together where it's like, okay. There's actually, did you see the round in the Pro Tour where Lucas Joklowski just scooped to Guillaume Wolfetapa in game yeah, one? Game one. <laughs> just so that he wouldn't know what he was playing. And he, he sideboarded wrong. Like, he didn't bring a rest in peace and, like, just lost a Psychic Spiral. <laughs> like, so you do what you got to do, right? So no turn one play from Zach, but that's not, ex that's not unexpected. He basically only has the um, Call of the Conclave. Watch Wolfen it up. These token decks don't really do anything for turn one anyway. It takes a while to get going. Yeah, it's a turn three critical mass deck. Burning Tree Shaman. 
into flute hoof bore. Seems good, right? That's a three three because he has a mountain, Dave. Yeah, I'm all over, <laughs> he's, I'm all over that now. The Calvert Conclave's doing work. You remember when the uh, <laughs> remember when Watch Wolf was a card? I, Did I you, didn't. Well, that didn't was at the same really time. Like, yeah. yeah, it was a it was a top eight Pro Tour deck. Just zoo. Rootborn defenses. What? Blowout. That's actually a card that sees. I've actually seen as a one of in like, well, not really currently, but in the old like green white list, like the green white aggro would play it. I've, I've seen it in some of the Magic Online daily lists. It's only ever like a one of. I guarantee yeah. it comes out of the sideboard. Oh, <laughs> that's pretty good too. Just paralyze. Does it make double tokens? Yes. Yeah, so Michael's like, so Michael's just now entered the uh, burn. Hope I can burn you out phase of the game, <laughs> yeah. and uh, Zach is at twenty. Because like Zach's gonna untap, play probably both halves of Lingering Souls, and just like <laughs> make eight dudes. And I know they're one ones, but like, okay, there's Reckoner. So did Zach not block the? Uh... I don't think so. You would think that he would be be a big fan of blocking after getting <laughs> getting blown out last week by the. Uh, I think he wins that game pretty handily if he just if he just trades his board. Yeah, especially in the spot Mike doesn't even have green, so he can't rampager. Oh, how about that? Uh, increasing uh, is that devotion? Yeah. So that's ten dudes, right? <laughs> is that good? He's getting there. <laughs> Oh my! Do they? They don't fly, do they? Nah, they're like soldiers. They're soldiers. Mm -hmm. God, at least he came prepared with all the tokens. Oh yeah, <laughs> that can fool around. I told you, he's a lawyer. He's meticulous. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hello. Not good. Not good. Oh, my God. I'm gonna have to build something else for next week. Well, you did. To be fair, you did say uh, you built your deck. You th your exact words were, "I threw this together last night." I think very few Pro Tour winners have than I previously said. I threw this together last night. So, um, Zach, er, so Michael's serving in with the uh, Reckoner and the Flint Hoof Boar with a prayer. You just uh, don't you just like you could just trade out with the Boar and just jump the Reckoner. Just hoping for those no blocks the rest of the match. <laughs> when it worked for him game one, it was a good strategy. Yeah. You gotta have a game plan. What's the flashback on increasing devotion? Is it eight? Uh, Seven. Let's use technology. Let's go to the videotape. Ah. Uh, so that's not happening anytime soon. But when it does, that's 20 dudes. So I think Zach blocked, double blocked, or he's blocking each with a centaur. And so now Michael at that awkward stage where like he wants to first strike, but then realizes he'll get no damage through. Yeah. But do you also like just turn your reckoner into a uh, like really bad lightning bolt or? He he doesn't have enough cards to be able to do that. <laughs> I think his problem is. There's not enough cards in his deck to do that at this point. <laughs> Zach has he, ten blockers. He he seems like he's in a spot where he he has like. A three drop in his hand. I don't know what a three drop would be, but maybe he has another reckoner. I want to somebody to just like just now turn on the stream. I'll watch the stream, see what's going on here. <laughs> There's just like four hundred tokens out. <laughs> they break out commander decks. Okay, so he he blocked with three dudes. And then blocked one blocked a flint hoof with the uh, centaur. And then off the uh, redirect damage from the Reckoner trigger, he's killed the other centaur. So Zach untaps now. Now with the paltry seven one one tokens, five mana and active uh, parallel lives and two cards in his hand. No, just one card. It's clearly not lingering souls because he would have cast that in a heartbeat, right? Does he have any township tucked away in there? Oh uh, no. Yeah. He does have Sunpelm Grove though. So look, watch out for that one. <laughs> Just pass 
passing back. It won't be it won't be disappointing if uh, Zach loses a game in which he makes ten dudes and they are one ones I guess. But I'm trying to think of like what, what I'm trying to think of like what series of cards. Come on, you gotta be keen on this stuff. Moves like a cat. I guess Mike could be trying to look some kind of Mizzy and Mortar's dream. I don't think it's on his list. Strong Kirk Noble, Pears. <laughs> what is this? Midnight Haunting? Make four dudes, well, three dudes after he blocks one. Because he has parallel lives. <laughs> huh. Earlier he made ten soldiers off of a... Uh, Yes. That's nice. Something like that. At some point, Zach's going to have to start attacking, but he, he needs an anthem effect before that becomes in any way profitable. Probably, is, is the namesake part of his deck the one against the Gillians? His last name was Vigilion. Oh, Vigilion, okay. Vigilions. We missed it earlier when we were talking about how pretend, when uh, pretentious people only choose to announce five Italian words in their natural pronunciation. You know, like, after this, maybe we'll go to Fazoli's and get some managot. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> that drives me insane. Three mana. Burst Reckoner. Paired. Like, you could just not block. Like, like you're at 17. Can you just take three here? Yeah. You can't keep suiciding all of your dudes into... Uh-oh. Uh -oh. We got a string bet here. Things are getting real. <laughs> he has no anthem effects out? No. Okay. <laughs> I think it might be funny in this game if, like, Zach ends up, like, losing because he's, like, more willing to block because he got blown <laughs> out last time. In game one, Zach chose not to block and then lost to a uh, Blood Rush Gore Clan Rampager okay. in a game that he very easily would have won if he just blocked... So now I think he's erring in the side of extreme caution. But when we get to nine, this game's over, right? Three more land draws. Close. Hey, well, that's the, the best land he could have drawn. Now he wishes he had not blocked. <laughs> that is um, Gavany Township. Township. Oh, and he has... Is this an anthem, too? No, Gather the Townsfolk. I forgot that card was even legal. You remember when, like, that's all anything anybody would do on turn two was cast the uh, Gather the Townsfolk after playing a champion in Paris? Wasn't that standard for, like, yeah. six months? It was there for a while. People were like, over. Aha. Uh -huh. How you like me now, Michael Taylor? Fake out. What? <laughs> Neither of these gentlemen can decide how they want to attack. We got string breaths and four attack phases per, per player per game. Luckily, though, Michael does... Michael has pretty advantage here because he does have Burning Tree Shaman. Or Emissary. Emissary. <laughs> Burning Tree Shaman hasn't been kicked out of the yet. 3-4 would be much more useful. <laughs> yeah, you think? I think a lot of cards would be more useful than the three Zendikar uh, mountains he's got. Oh, those, those are John Avon, so... Get some pro points there. Which one did you get that were foiled? Uh, Goblin on... Oh, that's my least favorite one. Oh, it's good thing. We also got Little House in the Prairie Plains. All, uh, all of uh, the Reckoners finding their way to the top of Michael's deck. To the top of his what? <laughs> there it is. We hadn't, we, we hadn't had that running joke in several weeks. I like how there's 40 people out there, but I can only hear Adam Vickers. <laughs> Oh my. So, six guys, two of which fly, which are clearly indicated by being above the other one. <laughs> He's put some kind of, like... Are those, those are some kind of, like, ascension jewels, aren't they? <laughs> and they all, we had both the turn one and the turn... Uh, game one and the game two handshakes. It's a classic. Let's hope for game three, guys. It's a classic. <laughs> so, Zach... Billy Anko on the back of Game Three, no handshake. Here, <laughs> Game Three, just 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 fight in the parking lot. So here's how Zach Billy Anko drew even in that matchup with the power of these standard powerhouses: root, uh, call of the Conclave, Rootborn defenses, parallel lives, increasing devotion. He will eat. That one's almost a real card. 
Dave was a little bit surprised when, uh, in game one, Zach uh, showed a moon silver spear in his hand. But I tried, I quickly explained to Dave that this is Zach Vilianco. Yes. So that's the least, that's the least eight, off eight, the wall card. Eight, 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 eight damage for Zach Vilianco is like every game. <laughs> I think the, when Zach starts building a deck, I think it starts with what eight cost abilities can I build my deck around? Well, Primal Surge, that was a ten, ten cost sorcery. I'm a little bit bored of that. What about an eight cost two turn equipment? That is worse than Elbrus. I don't know. It's not, it, it's not, well, I mean, it's not great, but. How great would it be if you played Elbrus in this type of deck? I'll be honest, I don't remember what Elvis does. Uh, I can look it up. Hold on. It's the plus one plus zero, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player... It, it flips, flips into like a 13-13, you win the game. Now, I played this in Legacy because you can stone for it, it, and it only costs one to equip. Nice. It costs seven to play and one to equip, and you get a 13-13. But other than that, other than all those things, it's pretty much the best. It's the best legendary equipment mm -hmm. in uh, Dark Ascension. Mm-hmm. Why that? I mean, it's the only legendary. It's not the only legendary artifact, mind you. What is the other legendary artifact? Legendary artifact? Hellbolt. Oh, Hellbolt. Karn. Yeah, true. Karn. Karn Silver Golem. Not in Dark Ascension. You didn't see it? I didn't know we put rules on it. This guy. Coming in here. Insults Alley based on sitting. Then... Changes his trivia question mid mid stream. I'm gonna play Edgar. Was he in the bathroom doing it? Huh? Was he in the bathroom? Oh, good grief! Wait a minute. What is happening? So we moved to game three mid here. Mid Round four match. I did mention this earlier. Michael is on three po uh, three wins. He wanted to draw in this round, at which point I pointed out to Zach that he's not on three wins <laughs> and would be drawing himself way out. Um. He, this is the pair down there. Not five players on nine points. Looking at standings, always beneficial whenever you're going to try. Yeah. To well, it around. was confusing, like I said, Bro. because there was some kind of mistake. They had to right. repair, and it did adjust things Vickers a little bit. Vickers did. Yes. Vickers. Standard product. Huh? Standard product. <laughs> What's funny is we had one participant uh, on our, like, Wednesday Modern and uh, Legacy events that would always do it wrong, which is hilarious because it's like an eight-person tournament. And it's like, you can pretty much tell. Like, it's not like this massive tournament where you're like, well, maybe I'm paired down or paired up. It's just like, did you win? No? Well, everybody else wins, so... Oh. And he would only notice after, like, the tournament was over. He'd be like, oh, I didn't win, but I won. He's there. He's really, really, really high. Yeah, he had smoked a lot of marijuana <laughs> prior to each and every round of every tournament I've ever played him in. So it's a valid excuse. Is it? I don't know. Like, you could just stay at the house and continue that activity. You don't have to drive over here and play wizard fights. Also, his running joke that he finds hilarious is, oh, it's modern tonight? I have a modern deck. <laughs> he, do he does make that joke every week. And oh, I thought it was legacy. Like, I, legacy, I thought, I thought it was modern. modern. Yeah, just like stock bug, bug list. He does make that joke a lot. Also, a favorite joke of his is, do you want to draw first or play second? Every time. <laughs> it's quite the wordsmith. <laughs> he's the Jason Moraz of our, of our legacy group. <laughs> he's, he's the bard himself. So, a good start from Michael. Turn one, Strom Kirk Noble. Zach apparently has a very hard decision here about which lane to play. <laughs> oh, we kid Zach a lot because he's a very deliberate uh, player. But, um... Has he taken his draw set yet? Or is this upkeep? Did he keep no lands? <laughs> I think he's deciding if he wants to shock himself to play an Absence Pilgrim. Yeah, but it can make a Midnight Haunting on turn two. It can make a turn two. Michael doesn't care. He's like, I don't have to think about it. Shock myself all day. Play this Burning Tree Shaman into Lightning Mower. Nope, oh, Shaman. Okay. Oh, he's playing Rancors. That was going to do some work. Because uh, Driver, Scott Driver is playing the same deck, and he is not playing those. Well, his is more Scottish. Mm-hmm. It is more Scottish. 
So <laughs> he does look he does look Scandinavian there. So now a 4-2 Stromkirk Noble. That is the Gather the Watchwolf. Oh, okay. Watchwolf much better. The only token that Zach Villianco has that corresponds to the actual card that he plays is the Centaur. He has blue tokens that I've never even seen before. Spirits. You just trade here, right? Yes. And you, you, you should attack with a boat. It's going to get rampagered hard. But, like, are you in a position where you can... You can't play around it. Like, I think you're exactly right, but, like... Well, I don't know, he doesn't seem to be playing removal. <laughs> he also doesn't like to block. What you want to do, attack? Maybe. Like, uh... Zach Milianco, he plays for I keeps. He, I think if you have Rampager, you attack with the, um... Rector's Cackler, too. Because there's no reason to hold it back. The awkward post-combat lightning mauler. I guess in this spot you were going to attack with it anyway. Right. Very clearly indicating that he just Did he say 20 out. minutes remaining? Yep. Good grief. I probably started the timer slow. Well, that's really out of character because everything else tonight has gone off without a hitch. <laughs> we didn't start the tournament until like quarter two. Then round one, JB accidentally deleted the round results. They had to put them back in. <laughs> So round one, like, when I cut the video down, so round, or delete. round one is going to be like an hour and a half long. So here is a Boros Reckoner paired to the Lightning Molar. Don't worry, root board defenses. So all those creatures are indestructible, right? Right. And, and populate, but does that mean that the token is indestructible too? I think you populate and then indestructible. Mm -hmm. Then you block the Reckoner here. Get rid of it, or do you eat one of the little ones? Well, populate is part of resolving the spell. I think populate is the second part on that spell, but it still is in play. It's still a state-based thing. The uh, spell resolves. So. Because indestructible doesn't prevent damage; it just means damage won't kill it, right? Right. So you still trample over top of it. Yeah. So he's going to take. Well, he's in a good spot here. Only down the four against the burn deck. Facing down a Rancor and two creatures. Does he have Day of Judgment in this deck? Pretty sure it's not legal. Good call, Dave. You nailed me. I was trying to t I was trying to tell a fibber. That's Pilgrim. That is in fact an Avicen's Pilgrim. It did for one white mana. It's currently summoning the sick. Is a 1-1 one, one green creature for one green mana. Prevent one damage this game. <laughs> Prevent one yeah, fog. Fog one damage for one turn. Because uh, he has a rancor. Which is coming down now. Well, I guess you can double block the rancor guy and then um, chop with the other guy. Or Whoops. That's solid. Whoops. And now we rancor. That yeah. first striker. So we double block with the centaurs. So we have uh, like honey. Yep. Guys. Midnight Haunting. Yes, you double block the centaurs. On the Rancor guy, and then, then you double... The... You just trade your boards. Exactly. Yeah, he's just looking to not lose. Yeah. The question is, can Zach find that block? Within five minutes. <laughs> do, 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 do. do not jump that really needs to kill his team, because he leaves a guy that's going to get Rancord and swing in again the next turn. Yeah. And there's always the impending doom of Gorkland Rampager, too. Oh, no. Because if he does this, like, he's going to have one Centaur against one... Well, that doesn't work. He doesn't see it. He doesn't see the first strike. Four, four, Yeah, I guess at least he's not dead. But that's... His top deck's are very poor against uh, the first trick that solid. I think what Zach was saying is like he wasn't concerned about them dying, he just wanted them to like not take any damage. But I think 
I think he overvalued saving that centaur. He would have saved the centaur the other way, too. Yes. Does he have township? Yeah. Is township good, though? Well, it doesn't matter now. Yeah, he's casting a spell. This is, is this Soren's? Parallel Lives is awful here. Unless you have Gather. Oh, well, that's fine. But the first striking uh, Trampler. Rancorn and Ashdell is really good. Was that uh, Devotion? Yes, increasing Devotion. Michael's got three cards in his hand, too. He's down to four mans. <laughs> it's one of the lowest mans you can be at. <laughs> really needs to get a one up here at some point. Do you think he's playing healing potions or? Uh, yeah, I saw a couple mushrooms. Is there a heal? Is there a healing? Is there a healer in his clan raiding party? I'm trying to throw in all the pop culture references I can and failing miserably. Mean culture? <laughs> <laughs> so you just get completely blown out by any kind of bolt here, right? Yep. One, two, three, four. At this point in the game, you just gotta turn around and you just gotta kinda hope. <laughs> no, he doesn't have it. Reckoner. <laughs> I reckoner it is. See what I did there, guys? It's good. good. Thanks. I've been working on that all week. It'll be on my it'll be on my latest comedy album. Write it down in your notepad. Yes, yeah. from the mirror. Yeah. Yeah. What's the deal with reckoners? <laughs> Do they first strike or not? Are they red? Who are they what? He has to be totally dead here. Uh, well, he, he can't. He's gonna run into the problem to where if he puts four power in front of the reckoner, he's just gonna yeah, he get him back dead, with no it. No matter what, because he's gonna have a rancor. So you're going to throw three power in front of it. He has to find and some way one, of blocking... And then two power are going to get through. He's going to find some way of blocking and then, like, killing his own dude. Right, exactly. Like some kind of old worm coil trick. Yeah. <laughs> some kind of, like, uh, cartel rooster type. But still trample through the no block. Well, we all know how smart Michael Taylor is. Michael Taylor a few weeks ago on camera did lose a game because he that he had in the bag because he forgot to repair a Pyreheart Wolf when it came back. Like he had Lightning Molar and a Pyreheart Wolf. All he has to do all he has to do is repair and then attack for two. Didn't. His opponent survived and won the game at two life. <laughs> That's a subtle jab on Michael Taylor there. Well, it's very easy for me to point these things out because I sit in this weird little closet and well, hover over everyone. So lose, right? Very good company. No, no, no. He can. Uh... Now he loses. Oh, that's an intangible virtue. No. Zach doing the. Post play all my spells, read your card. <laughs> yeah, did I make the right decision here? <laughs> Let me figure this out. Uh, I didn't have this oblivion ring in my hand. So if he blocked with the 1-1, one, one, 3 would trample over, plus the 1 damage. Right, there's no way to do this. As long as, as long as Michael is smart enough to put the Rancor on the Reckoner. Let's not give a first strike. Do these decks play Brimstone Volley? No. I love Brimstone Volley. Magic decks, some magic decks. Like, Co cost too much mana. So, sometimes the mono red decks will play two. Just lost to it. But, uh, but the, the decks will force them, don't. I just want to play these things again. Goblin Grenade? Is that an M13? Yeah, an M12. 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 Uh, it doesn't matter, Chieftain's, man, or Chieftain's not legal. You can't play Goblins without Chieftain. Of course you can. You can play War Chief. Well, yeah, but then if we're talking about other cards, they also play Chieftain in that deck, too. For just going full-on illegal to Legacy mode. But then the problem is that you're playing Goblins in a, in a uh, environment where you can cast Turn 1 Show and Tell. Yeah. But I, had a, but I had a Goblin but, Lackey. Yeah, Goblins also sideboard like four Angel Spheres? Uh, it used to. Oh, back to Stinger. 
What? I don't. What are we thinking about, guys? Uh, they pause the game to talk about. <laughs> Emmy favorite, Man's their favorite coffee shop. Michael is getting a, a judge. He's getting a judge call just to check to make sure that Zach is actually at Four Man's. <laughs> I'll call JB over and be like, "Is Zach dead?" <laughs> Hey, JB, should I do this? <laughs> Can you call the judge and ask them if it's a good play? Hey, man. Hey, judge. Come watch this. Judge and Judy. <laughs> Come check this out. Flint of Boar. And... And the ring. Oh, my God. What's going on? Anything that note. Oh, wow. my goodness. I feel bad, because I'm not, like, trying to, like, find fault with their play or whatever, but, like, right. that just, like... But now he has intangible words, and if he truly has a ball to the Archangel... Oh, if he... He doesn't have a ball, he would have slammed it, but, like, that would... Wouldn't that be the most brutal thing ever? Right. Like, attack for a billion yeah. balls? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody in the street mentioned Celestia Charm, too. That's a reasonable card he might have. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And we do know he likes to make tokens. Show for the camera. <laughs> All he right. Is, he is the Dion Sanders of our store. He is the Leon Sandcastle. Is that the, the thing? What? They had a Super Bowl commercial where Dion Sanders went back into the combine and he was Leon Sandcastle. <laughs> So, nothing has changed about the board state. If, if Zach did not draw a card, like, relevant cards are Selesnia Charm. Um, Overrun would be pretty good right now. <laughs> yeah, Overrun, he still dies, doesn't he? No, yeah. Because he just has to block one creature and it does four damage back to him. No, that's a trigger. Yeah. Oh, so he would die on the he combat. Just die right. with the trigger on the stack. Yes, he does have black. Because on Michael's turn, Blood Artist triggered the result before uh, Reckoning triggers. Here's something. No, he's just activating Township. Here come the beads. Here come the dice. Got more of those guys. It's not dice. I think they're those crystals that you get from Ascension. Crystals you get from Victor's Crystal game? Like, no one else has ever played Ascension? No. They do have those little, I say keep track of, of your mans. SCG, uh, now sponsoring Ascension tournaments, though. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you play, is there competitive Ascension? There is now. I know there's a Kaijudo show now on their, on their web channel, YouTube channel. Oh, here we go. I think you had enough to get there. I might have counted it wrong. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Twelve. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. There's 20 there. Uh, I can hear what they're talking about. Zach's saying he he's not exactly sure how the Boris Wagner trigger works, and Michael's explaining to him that he's dead. That's a no. You do not live. Zach is like, I only needed five more mana to cast Primal Search. <laughs> do, you th do you think he sideboards in more Moon Silver Spears in this matchup? <laughs> Sounds like the worst. <laughs> this is, I've been doing this. I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to, because for, for in the stream, for the next giveaway card we're giving away, which is a Stoneforge Mystic, I'm going to ask this question in the stream chat. So all 122 of you, prepare for this answer. Can I use your keyboard to answer? You cannot. No one who is currently in the room can participate. You can't win, card you can't win your own card back. <laughs> That's the rule. The question is, I was about to say just colloquial, colloquially in conversation with uh, Dave here. For Stoneforge Mystic, we have been doing this stream for a long time. The question is... What week is, is this? How many weeks have we been doing this stream? First one to answer correctly in the chat, you win! That is incorrect. All of you. 
There it was. Chaz wins. 28th week. It's the 28th week. It is week 28. Although, there is... <laughs> see, <laughs> the problem is, is that uh, Descent is Cameron in Australia. Like, he's too... Uh, uh, we did miss a week, but this is 28 counting the missed week. We're 28 weeks in. So congratulations to Chaz. He wins Stoneforge Mystic. So I'll send that to him. Let's see who's left in this... Uh... What's your name? Dave Brown! You're not Dave Brown! <laughs> You're Dave Snow. Did you watch Game of Thrones? You'd have already heard it earlier. What? I'm going to name my child Jon Snow. I was just curious because it me apparently it meant something back in olden times. Oh. Like there was connotation to snow. It's awesome. That means you're from the north. That was a connotation to it, yes. So awesome. congratulations. Who was it, Chaz? <laughs> yeah, Chaz. He wins SFM. Now let's see how many people are left in this hot mess of a tournament we got going on here. 36. So apparently, if you give away some awesome magic cards every week, then people actually play, around, yeah. people play in the tournament. I have to come back next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just have to, you have to, why am I typing in Stone Forge Mystic into that? So we'll randomly choose one of 36 players. Uh, you are, you guys are drawn live, actually. Seven. You can. 36. So let's see which one of our fine competitors here. Uh, this one is Sword of Feast and Famine. Sweet. 14. Jonathan Tincher. Okay. And I've never met Jonathan Tincher so let's before. Pick another one. <laughs> That's not how giveaways work. Under four minutes remaining in the round, so thanks to everyone who's still watching. We've got uh, another match coming up shortly. Then the top eight should have some potential winning ends. The last giveaway for the stream is old Mr. Thurn. Thurn the last troll. He's a very lonely gentleman. He's actually spiked in price recently. How much does this card cost, Dave Snow of the North? <laughs> The magic online tickets or paper? In paper. I have no idea. How it's much does it cost in tickets? Probably two. Maybe four. It's a twelve dollar <laughs> card. Four's probably about right then. Yeah, they I there's I have, I don't understand I mean, I understand the disconnect, but I'm in no way like familiar with the discrepancy. I'm actually not that good on paper anymore because 'cause I've really kind of like lost interest in like like memorizing all the prices about everything, but yeah, he's gone up a lot in the um, post uh, jund bannings because there's been an interesting cycle that's happened where people have bought out several specific staples. Are you familiar with this? Uh -huh. So the first one that went and it went very quietly was Fulminator Mage. Uh -huh. Try to buy a Fulminator Mage online. You know how much Fulminator Mage costs in paper? Does it cost like a quarter online? That's Is it even a dollar? That's about right. Yeah, it's I a $10 card. You can find one for cheap at $10. Yep. Uh -huh. Because someone just bought, just bought out the internet. They've also done that with Spellskite. That's why it's a that's why it's a fifteen dollar card. Uh, so yeah, Spell, Spellskite's at the fifteen. I was checking with David to see if he had a slip. Oh, I'll put it in the thing. Okay. In the box we heard. Uh, he just didn't yeah. He can't find it. Oh, okay. We threw it in the trash. No big deal. Yeah, but Spellskite is at the fifteen. Well, right? Grove of the Burn Willows has been bought out. Like a lot of the Tron pieces have been bought out. I'm really surprised that no one has bought out uh, Birthing Pod. So you're going to talk to me about my, my, birth... the, how I should have lost that game? Mm, that game... Yeah, that game you made a, a weird block. Yeah, you both made some interesting plays. Well, he had me dead on board. If he he, he could have won the last turn. Yeah, okay. Right? Yeah. You saw that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I thought he was going to kill me. I don't know why. I wasn't sure. Well, if you had see. drawn Vault of the Ar Ar Archangel, it would have been like the greatest thing in the world. <laughs> Because that, that would just the game would be over in the other way that time. Are you saying when I used did the multiple human block on the Boris Reckoner? Yeah, I would have double blocked with uh, two centaurs. The collective oh. think tank in here, and by that I mean Dave Snow said that's what you should have done, so I go with that. Double centaur, the Stormcard Noble. That's another good name for a metal band. <laughs> double centaur, the Noble. <laughs> Uh, what what about the first uh, game? Do you block? extort the grave crawlers are are currently? Well, what did you block? No, no, I'm talking about the first game when he had he had the uh, I had all the spirits and I could have I could have like traded a bunch of stuff out, but I had an alpha strike coming back at him. No, you should have blocked. I should. That's what I said. I you should have just traded your board. I think. Yes, I agree. I, that was that was a mistake. It was a terrible mistake because I'm not very good at magic sometimes. But. No, one, no one cares. We were having a good time. 
Uh, was it was it decently exciting? Was that? Was it, it was fun to watch. We liked the game one and the game two and then the game three handshake though. Oh yes. Very yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, super super uh, sporting right there. So. Was, do you have the angelic spears in your sideboard too? Moon moon silver spears. Moon silver spears. Those were made for it. Two. Two. Four. four. <laughs> four. <laughs> That's like the nut hand is like a Gavity Township, Gavity Township Plains, then all four Moon Silver Spears. You can't win, you can't lose from that spot. You can't lose. Well, you want to play a turn three of Johnny. That way you can also go to Johnny and then at the same time have enough mana to. That was a. Moon Silver Spears. <laughs> something to talk about. You can't lose from there. Life, I tweeted last night something I thought was. Every now and then I'll tweet something just like just being a jackass, and then it'll get like retweeted like a ton. And I'm always surprised at like which ones people find funny. Last night I posted one I thought was I don't know particularly clever, where it's like turns out Miracle Bonfire for the win is a lot better than Miracle Planes for the loss. <laughs> <laughs> because there's so many times in the game where you're just like, oh man, yeah, there's only one retweet. But I think it's things that Jay, because Jay Bush from the A Team follows me, and I think it's things that. He finds particularly funny, which are like some of the more like they have to be like really kind of in your face, Andrew Dice Clay type comedy for him. <laughs> yeah. that, that's my that's my joke. Hey, that guy sucks. Hey, forget about it. Hey, oh, the Dice Man that coming. No, that's my Andrew Dice Clay. If somebody mentioned in the chat earlier, if you missed uh, Star City Games Las Vegas Legacy Top Eight, you need to go back and watch the archives. And I don't even know if they archive the in between commentary because the quarterfinal matchup went forever because someone was playing blue white miracles and that's the worst and uh, he went off like five times earlier in the day about how he hates sensei's top and yeah i hate top two Everyone but like the game that like the, command the other three quarterfinals all finished and the last round which was like not on camera because they only have two on camera it went for another like 35 minutes from the point they left the last match because it's untimed in the top eight. So, like, it was Cedric Phillips and Osip Lebedovich just, like, cracking wise. And it was just Osip talking about, like, they were talking about that Summer Bloom deck in Modern. Have you seen that? I've seen it. Oh, my gosh. Oh, so yeah, I'm going to tell you. The, the Titan deck. Yeah, the Amulet of Vigor deck. Watch out. He's going to blast through there. But so, and he's like, he's like, he's like, clearly this is the best deck in the format because your end game is to play a Titan and then maybe activate, uh, you know, you attack with an 8-6. Maybe. It's like, clearly this is the greatest. So we move to round five, the the final round. Are you still in this tournament? Nope. Yeah, you are. I dropped. You got paired. Well, congratulations to my opponent. You might want to go out there and at least indicate to him that you're not playing. Um, Who is my opponent? Ruth? That's super nice. Oh, that's exciting. I did want to mention that... Um, well, I'm actually going to play because she is really nice. I don't want to disappoint Sure, that's fine. Um, but uh, Ruth, it's very interesting because so Ruth's husband does like 3D tokens. Mm -hmm. And they have offered to do one and donate it for a giveaway on the stream. So we'll have a poll on our Facebook page throughout the week. Uh, and you can vote on what token you want to see 3D altered. And then we'll give that away at a future round, or future tournament. But take a break, go find another feature match, and we'll be right back. Me, Ruth?